All right. Hey, team. It's Dee Corchin here for our Coaches Out for Change, our Monday night team time. And we know community is so important. So I just want you to know that I see you. I am glad that you are here. Um, whether you're brand new to coaching or coaching for years, what we do know is that community, learning together, growing together um, is just really what we're all about. It's the heartbeat of what Optavia is. So um, <clears throat> we've had a busy couple of weeks. We were um, we had our executive director leadership retreat for Op Coaches Out for Change last week. And then uh, this past weekend was the advanced leadership conference um, out in Utah. And um, this was especially fun this year because I got to have Meg Johnson attend as well. This was a qualified qualification event. And um, Dr. A referred to it as the top gun of Optavia. Um, and I'm bragging on Meg right now, but it was the, um, the top 400 coaches out of 68,000 coaches. Um, so quite an event. We, we call it, it used to be called Sundance. Now it's called the Atlanta, uh, the advanced leadership conference. And I honestly come out of there sometimes and they call it getting Sundance. Like there's so much information and so much it's like, Whoa. Um, but we thought we would just take a few minutes before our big topic tonight, which is a panel on the discussion of fear. Um, Meg, I'd love you to have you hop in and just kind of share what you experienced there and what you're excited about. Yes. Awesome. Thank you, Dee. Well, I just want to say, man, it was such a weekend and we are still unpacking it. But one of the things I learned this weekend is that we are so much alike. I showed up in that room and I felt a little bit like I stuck out like a, like a sore thumb, right? Cause I'd never been in that room before. And what I learned is you belong in that room. It is a room full of people. A lot of us went to awaken and, and you heard about struggles and insecurities that we all have. And what I learned is even in a room like that, of these people that have massive businesses, right? That we see on trainings, they have insecurities, they have struggles. One of them talked in front of the whole group and asked, I'm a, Am I too much? I'm afraid I'm too much. Another one said one of, in front of everyone, y'all, she said, one of my biggest, greatest fears is that I'm going to be the largest IPD in the company. So I just want you to know if you have struggles, if you have insecurities, know you aren't alone. And that does not preclude you from being in that room and um, belonging in that room. You belong on this call in the Zoom room right now. And furthermore, you belong in any room that you walk in. You have a light in you that you get to share with other people. So I've got a question for you. Put in the chat why you coach. Why do you coach? Why are you here right now? Why are you showing up on a Monday night when you have probably a gazillion other things to be doing? Why are you here? Why are you coaching? I really want you to take a minute and put that in the chat and think about what it is that you want. I know a lot of us, we've done the awakening exercises, right? So we've been awakened to what we want, whether it's to help somebody else or go on vacations or take our health to the next level or whatever it is. One of the questions I've been thinking about is what am I willing to do to get these things that I want? What am I willing to do? And what am I willing not to do to make that happen? I think that's an important thing to really mull over and to think about. Many of us, me especially included, want to grow our businesses. We want to be in growth. One of the things Doug Wood said is if you are ready to grow, if you want to grow, be prepared to spend 50% of your time finding new clients and new coaches. Y'all, I have been stuck managing my business instead of growing my business. And I'll just tell you, being in management mode is not where you want to be if you want to grow your business. So find ways to get out of management mode and to change your structure of your schedule so that you can really grow. One of the things we spent a lot of time talking about is uh, transformational leadership and, and conscious leadership. So what, I want to ask you, are you willing to lead yourself from a place of consciousness? Because until we're leading ourselves, we really can't lead others in this area, right? And when we're leading ourselves, and this really stepped on my own toes, we need to remember about the dra drama triangle, right? We've got heroes, we've got victims, we've got villains. So when we lead, we don't need to lead from the drama triangle, not as the hero coach, not as a victim, not as a villain, but really being a coach. So that was just huge for me because I, I got to tell you, sometimes I play the victim. When a client schedules a time to talk to me on my calendar, and they don't show up. I go into the blame game and I start to feel sorry for myself. Or when I call them and call them and call them and they don't answer, I'm making it about me. I'm not making it about them. 
and I'm going into the victim mode. And another thing that I stepped on my own toes and y'all put in the chat if I'm stepping on your toes and know that I love you anyways. But a couple of weeks ago, I was talking to D the Thursday before Awaken and I said, D, I'm really bored. I'm just bored right now. And what I learned this weekend is I wasn't bored with my business. I wasn't bored with my clients. I was bored with me. I was bored with where I am in my health. I was bored with the activities I'm doing because I'm not in alignment with what, what I'm doing and what I say I'm going to do or what I say I want. So I just want to encourage you, if you are feeling bored, maybe ask yourself, is it really that I'm bored? Is it really that my clients are boring or whatever? Is it something in me that I need to fix? Because for me, it was in me. Okay, here's a zinger that for sure stepped on my toes. It was that cheerleaders don't win games coaches win games. Are you coaching your clients or are you cheering for your clients? Because I can get stuck into cheering my clients on and saying, oh, okay, let's find the victory. At least we, you know, at least we ate some of our fuelings. At least we drank a little bit of water, right? And I think we can take it a ne a, the, to the next step and say, it's not really the coach that wins the game, right? But it's the player that wins the game. It's our role to help that player win. So are you positioning your client or that player to win with a good strategy? Okay, I could go on and on, but my timer is going off. Just want you to know you belong and you are needed. Thanks, Dee. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, this is why we, we want you with us. Did you see our picture? We had our arms out. We want, you know, there's so much we want to share. Um, and I wanted Meg to go first because I didn't want to repeat anything that she said. And I think a couple of key points, I love what you asked Meg is why are you here? And what they, what they talked about, you know, is um, we go through seasons and cycles in our business and just calling out the elephant in the room. I think we would all mostly say we're feeling kind of a season, right? We're kind of feeling nobody really knows exactly what's going on. Is it the economic client uh, climate or people bored? Like Meg said, are people just bored with themselves? But we're all feeling a bit of, a, you know, or many of us are feeling a bit of a sink. Like this is not quite going at the pace that I wanted. And what they said that the, the number one thing is at this point, when you're in this kind of situation is one, be clear of what you want, be clear of what you want and your intentions. Um, why are you here as a coach? Um, and that this was such a good reminder, you guys, what do you want for people, not from people? So remember, whether it's their health journey, right? We want them to be victorious in their health and whatever it looks like for them. For a coach on your team, you want them to be victorious. Of course, the ripple effect is going to be into you. But if somebody feels that energy for you, from you, that it's what you want from them, it, it always is going to backfire. Um, and just as uh, Meg was saying, you know, leading ourselves. And I just love the question. They said, how are you going to choose to show up as an Optavia transformational leader? because every single one of us on this call is a leader because you made the decision, number one, to lead with your own health and two, to become a coach and, and, and share this gift with somebody else. So you meet the definition of a leader. Um, and the, they said, when we go through seasons, when we go through cycles, um, it said during, and some of us on this call were honestly, we may be stuck for the very first time. We might have come in and like we did a post and all these clients came and maybe that's not happening for you. I hope it is. But if it's not, it said, you know what, this is during hard times is when the strong are separated from the weak um, and being the dominant force in your own life is going to be so important in order to be able to lead others to do the the uh, the same. So what we want to do is lead ourselves well, because it's definitely a season of separation. Um, and they said that the things to do is number one right now is the time we want to be pursuing personal growth. Just like Meg said, what, what they did for us this weekend was hold that mirror up to us. We had Jim Dethmer and really holding up the mirror. And when you think the world is happening to you, really holding it up and saying, okay, what am I doing maybe in this circumstance that's compounding it? Um, creating boundaries, you know, watch what you let influence you. Negative creates negative, you know? So if you talk to somebody and somebody's having, you know, your business down, well, my business down, well, phew, it must be everybody. Hang with the people that are making changes to be doing something about it. And what they talked about is now is the time we're probably going to have to work harder at building our relationships, et cetera, because of the way that the world is right now. And always know when you're in a season of struggle that that, that is preparing you for the next season. So this is where we stay consistent. We stay active and we stay in personal growth because it's ready for um for the next season and the number one thing i heard was self-bullying is never the answer 
So if you turn any of these, you know, if you open up connect, it's not representing your value. All it's doing is just a, a, a picture of the impact you're making at that moment. There is no judgment attached to it unless you attach the judgment to it. So um, the other thing was it just talked about the abundant mindset. And I wore my fear is a liar t-shirt because we're going to talk about the topic of fear tonight. But one of the number one things we can do in this business is think too small. And if we like let scarcity slip into our mind, nobody wants to get healthy. Nobody wants to become a coach. I would say that's the ultimate fear, right? Um, but love, abundance, being available, that is going to be what attracts. So Shauna, I'm excited to hear your panel tonight. Well, that was fabulous. Who's going to Sundance next year? We can't miss it, right? Love it. Thank you so much, Megan D, for sharing. So our topic tonight is moving from fear to action. Have you ever had a moment of crippling fear building this business? I have. Yeah, probably everybody has. And we've got four amazing ladies tonight that are going to each speak to something slightly different that they battle when it comes to building this business. So we're going to start first with Monica. And Monica and I were talking and, um, you know, the, the fear that Monica is battling right now is very common to a lot of us. And um, I'm not going to give it away. I want her to tell you about it, but I just want you to know that it touched my heart because I have been there. Um, so Monica, I would love for you to go ahead and share, sweetie. Sure. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so my fear is really around, you know, am I worthy to have this responsibility or this blessing to help other people? You know, what makes me special enough to really influence and um, be able to encourage other people and change other people's lives. I mean, if you really think about it, it's kind of overwhelming to think the effect that we can have with our own story and our own journey and how that can kind of influence other people. Um, so it's kind of scary if you really let yourself think about it. Um, I think part of it is sometimes I'm afraid that I'm going to give them wrong advice. You know, maybe I'm misinterpreting something that they're struggling with. And I, and, and it's very important, I think, as we're doing this is to really work in, on your listening skills, because sometimes we're listening to answer. I am very much guilty of that. So as soon as someone starts addressing something or alluding to an issue they're having, as I'm a coach, I feel like I already know what they're going to say. And I jump in and I try to fix and I'm big on the hero coach guilty of that as well. So um, I think listening is such a key part of the coaching business. Um, and really that's what it's about. I mean, anyone can listen and anyone can give an empathy. So you are worthy because we're really just providing the human touch and giving our heart. And if you think of it like that, and not that you need to be an expert or somebody who, you know, has all this experience. Um, I think when you lead from your heart is when things really happen and when people really respond. Um, I think the other thing is um, sometimes it's hard to admit, but to lean into our leadership. I often um, will reach out to Shauna or bring someone to a call with her when I just don't know. I mean, it's okay to say we don't know. I think we feel this responsibility as we say we're their coach. We have this huge title now. And it's really not. I mean, we're really just a resource and a friend and a person in their corner that's going to guide them just as if you would guide a friend. And sometimes you don't know the answers. And if you don't know, you just go to those who may be able to help. I think it takes a village sometimes for all of us to be successful. So getting our head around that, I think, is really, really important, too. So. I think anybody who has a good heart and a conscience to help others, you know, that's really what you should focus on. And don't be afraid that you're not good enough because we're all good enough. We all have something to give. We all have gifts to share. Um, we're all unique. And I think that's what makes this whole coaching environment amazing because there's so many of us with so many gifts and talents we share with each other and we just kind of lift our clients up together really by doing this community and everything. So yeah, so that is my fear. Thank you so much, Monica. And I love that you spoke into leaning into your mentorship. And this was a big one for me. I was afraid that people would think I wasn't good enough if I leaned into my coach when I first started coaching. So I tried to do everything all by myself. And that was because of fear, because I didn't want people to think I wasn't good enough to do it 
without help. Love right. that. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Um, so uh, Diane is going to speak next, and she's coming at this from a little bit of a different angle, um, uh, something that she struggled with that um, actually is a is a product of fear often. Um, so Diane, you want to go ahead and speak to um, the, the panel tonight? Thank you, Shauna, so much for the honor of, of being able to share tonight. For most of my life, one of my biggest fears was um, struggle with perfectionism. And it really started from my upbringing. Um, I never wanted to get in trouble. Uh, so everything had to be just right. I had to get good grades. I had to obey the rules, do all those things. But with this perfectionism that I was struggling with, um, I had to first become aware that I was a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. So through Habit Finder and in my first free session, taking the Habit Finder assessment, the coach asked me, how comfortable are you, Diane, with someone who you think is so perfect? And I had to stop and think about that a minute. And I realized I was probably not someone people wanted to meet or get to know, and I wasn't very approachable. And when I think back, um, before I started coaching in January of 2019, I mean, I had never posted on Facebook in my life. I'd surely never done a Facebook Live. And, but, you know, I realized I'm not a brain surgeon. And I just started saying, so what to myself? I mean, I post daily now and I do a Facebook Live at least once every two weeks. And I know for some of you, that's not much, but for others, it might be a good bit, but I'm taking my baby steps to grow and develop. And my mantra today is from Amy Kemp and it's imperfect progress is better than perfect procrastination. And I have to live by that. I mean, if I practice doing the small things imperfectly, even when it, you know, making a bed up and leaving a wrinkle in it or leaving a dish in the sink. So what, you know, how about picking up the phone and calling people? I don't have to have perfect words. I just have to listen and have my heart ready to love and ask questions to better understand where they're at and what they want. Paul Blanchard says, if life is a mess, how can you mess it up? So, you know, give yourself grace. It helps me to meet people where they are at. And I know I have to meet me where I'm at too. So I hope you can do the same and you'll be surprised how fully present you can be. I hope that's helpful. Thank you, Shauna. That was perfect. Thank you so much, Diane. And, you know, when I look at somebody who just appears to be perfect and everything they do is just so on top, you know, I, I used to think, oh my gosh, they must be so confident and they're so sure of themselves. But one of the things I've learned over the last year or so is that when we have that trait, there's usually a root of fear behind it somewhere. And I think Diane, you know, quickly found that out when she started digging into it. So if that's your struggle, you know, maybe start to kind of dive into what root fear might be behind that, because you know, the perfectionism will catch up with you at some point. And I love how she realized that you're not very approachable when you're so perfect. So um, thank you so much for being vulnerable with us. Okay, so Corey is going to speak to you next. And oh my goodness, this is a big one for a lot of us. And if you were at Awaken, you probably heard it every time I got up on stage. Um, so Corey, I'd love for you to come off of mute and share something that you've struggled with and worked through. Thank you. Um, so a huge fear that I have had from the beginning is not wanting to post. Um, it actually made me question coaching in the beginning. I didn't want to show what I looked like in the past. I didn't want to put it out there for people that I hadn't seen in years to, um, to see where I had, where I was at. And so, but then after leaning into my mentors, I was able to push past that because I realized I was actually helping people see that it was possible. I have clients that have been friends with me since high school. And some of them I hadn't talked to in years and they 
have told me that they decided to take a chance because they trusted me. And they say they saw me putting my heart out there doing something that wasn't easy and it gave them courage. So now, you know, I kind of step back and I think about those people and how they were frustrated and I was able to give them hope. And I still get in my own head about posting. I worry that I'm bothering people, that they don't want to see transformations, that I'm too long-winded, um, I'm too over the top, I'm too, re you know, I'm repetitive. So I work hard to overcome those noises that I'm playing inside my head because that's all they are. I've come to learn that the head runs and the heart walks. So the head can think logically, but the heart sometimes takes a while to catch up. And deep down, I know that my fears are just stories that I'm telling myself. So what do I do to overcome them? I think you need to take what you struggle with and apply hours to it. Since posting wasn't my thing, I signed up to be a moderator on Eat, Live, and Be Healthy so that I hold myself accountable. I'm assigned a post or uh, a Friday post each week. And believe me, these get in my head. I have second guessed everything before I put it out there. And then I've watched to see how people like it or commented, but it seems to get easier every single week. And then um, today I heard something profound in my mind. Average consistent content beats amazing inconsistent content. So it's kind of like the saying in sports where hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. So I just have to put in, I have to put in the work. And at Awaken, something that spoke to me was Frank talked about how some coaches will post every day for a few days and then not post for about five more days. And that that is exactly what I had been doing. But if we want consistency in our business, we have to have consistency in our daily life. So when I post and get messages or responses, then my confidence increases. And when I'm struggling with it, I can sit back and think, where would I be if my coach wouldn't have posted consistently? Because I watched her for quite a while before I reached out. So my last thought would be, one, the best responses to obstacles is to do it anyway. And two, watch what you're telling yourself. The daily story that we should be telling ourselves is, is I've got a gift worth giving. Corey, that was powerful. You knocked that out of the park. For a lot of us, that is such a struggle. Thank you so much for sharing. And I think if you if you struggle with sharing your personal story, put a one in the chat. Because I can share somebody else's story all day long. But who do people want to see more than anything? You and your journey. So if that's your struggle, you know, work on that and, and get confident with it. It doesn't always have to be about your weight loss. It can be about how you're feeling, you know, or that amazing, um, you know, walk that you did from the car to the mall where it used to be you circled for an hour looking for a close-up spot. There's so many things that you can post about that are so impactful. And then ask all your clients, why did you reach out to me? If, if posting is your struggle, ask them, why did you reach out to me? And probably they're going to tell you because of a post you made. Always. Thank you, Corey, so much. Okay, Heather. Heather um, is going to speak to you about something tonight that terrifies her were her words. And I'm so proud of you for being here. And something that Dee said earlier, um, how are you choosing to show up? These ladies are choosing to show up as leaders tonight because they're talking about something that terrifies them and a, a big fear and a struggle for them. So I want you to, you know, just put a lot of encouragement for them in the chat as well. All right, Heather, take it away, sweetie. Yeah. So um, one thing I have spoke several times on this is public speaking. Um, I was the one that when I started Optivia. I didn't come to the calls. And then when I would come to the calls, my camera was off because I didn't want anybody to see me. Um, and then I thought, I've got to push past that if I'm going to grow. So I started putting my camera on, showing up to the calls. Um, and then I think Meg was one had reached out and asked me to speak on a call one time. And I was like, mm, no. Um, but I had heard someone say, say yes before you can say no. Um, and do it scared. And so that's exactly what I told her in my response. Meg, I'm telling you yes before I can tell you no. Um, and I did it and I was scared, of course, but it gets so much easier. The more I did it, the more I talked on the calls, like it got so much easier for me. Um, 
And then actually, when Dee had asked me to speak at Awaken, um, sorry, Dee, I ignored her. Um, I was like, maybe if I just pretend I didn't see that, I don't have to answer that. Um, and my dad knows like where I want to be. I want to be a leader and I want to lead a team and I want to have massive impact. And so my dad was like, sweetie, how are you ever going to grow if you don't put yourself out there and get out of your own comfort zone? So I made a promise with him that if they would reach back out, I wasn't reaching out to her, but if, if she would reach back out, then I would say yes. And by gosh, at four o'clock that day, she sent me a message and I was like, oh no. So I said, yes, I did it scared. Um, for anybody that was at Awaken, I got up there and I was a bag of nerves. I literally cried through the whole thing. Um, but when I got finished, you guys, I felt so accomplished and I felt so empowered and then people were coming up to me after that. I have no idea what I said because I kind of just left my body, I think. But I had so many people thanking me and just telling me, you know, that I had inspired them. And I was like, oh, my gosh, well, that is amazing. Um, and then this past weekend, I completely stepped out of my comfort zone and hosted a um, help, hope and coffee night in Chattanooga. And I did it. I co-hosted it and I led the whole thing by myself and I did not even have 1% nerve. Um, so I put myself out there and grew through that. And so I will, I know my time's about up, but I wanted to share one inspirational card with you. It says, I am limitless. I removed my self-inflicted boundaries in order to reach my fullest potential. So for anybody that's out there, if you've got something holding you back, I encourage you to be limitless and to remove those boundaries so that you can be who you're supposed to be. Wow. Thank you so much, Heather. That was fabulous. Did she sound nervous at all to y'all? Heck no. Did a great job. Ladies, you did a fabulous job tonight. You know, fear is something that most of us are going to battle at some point building this business. And when you hear somebody else speak about something that you can relate to, does it make you feel better? You kind of get that, I'm not alone in this, right? I saw several comments, you're speaking to me. So I'm gonna give you an example of a butterfly tonight. Um, a butterfly start off as a caterpillar. Not the most attractive thing in the world. Some of them are pretty and some of them aren't, but they're just a caterpillar. And they transform into this, they build this cocoon around themselves at some point when they know it's time to start changing. And in that cocoon, it is messy and it's yucky and it's not comfortable. And I like to think about my fear as that cocoon, what's in that cocoon, that yuck. And then after they've done all that work in that cocoon, they, and they faced all their fears and they faced all their yuck, what do they emerge as? A beautiful butterfly on the other side, beautiful butterfly. So I like, I am leaning into the butterflies who've gone before me. I'm leaning into my mentors to books, to webinars, to each of you who speaks. And this helps me to push past my fears. Because I, I sit here and I look at everybody and I go, if you can do it, I can do it. If that person that wrote that book can write that amazing book, you know, I can follow those principles in that book. So I want you to stop and take just a second and think, how many of you are butterflies in some place in your life or in some part of your coaching business tonight? How many of you? Yeah. You know why you are? Because you've pushed past that particular fear that helped you grow into that butterfly for that moment. So I just want you to know that facing your fears is a way to work through them. And every time you do, you're going to come out feeling so much more accomplished like the girls talked about tonight. Thank you all so much. You did an amazing job. And I'm so proud of each and every one of you. And thank you for being willing to talk tonight. Um, Dee, we're going to turn it back over to you. All right. Y'all, Mama Bear is so happy. I love, I am so proud of every single one of you guys for being on this call. What this tells me is you do want to be that butterfly. You do want to grow. If this has meant something to you between Monica, Diane, Corey, Heather, put a 10 in the chat, like if this is going to help you move forward. And I really, a couple of things I want to say real quick. Um, 
number one, fear is a liar, right? All those stories they were telling in their heads by pushing through them, not only did, were they able to um, help somebody else, but it also helped them themselves come into, to, to themselves. Um, but what we're doing is worthwhile, you guys. I want to share a couple of things that were shared um, this weekend. You know, Dr. A reminded that what we offer is the opportunity to live a long, healthy life for people, for people who are willing to do the work, right? Is everybody ready? Maybe not, but that's what we're offering to people. And what he said is, um, we are more than a sales force. Um, we are people who first want to heal themselves and then help others. And when you sit on this call, when you're learning, you're developing, right? You are healing in so many ways other than just your physical body. So don't miss the importance and significance of that. Um, Nick Johnson, as we were closing up, he said, the impact um, that we make is the most worthwhile venture ever that we can do. He said, so many people need to know about us and they need us and they need you to find out about us. So the people need us. And I would really love to extend a challenge. We all said about sharing that we're uncomfortable sharing our own story. Guys, this is what people need right now. They need you. They need human connection. They need, um, they need to see real people. And I would challenge every single one of us. I will do it too. Let's share our personal story in some way. Share some aspect of your story within the next 24 hours right? That's what people need from us. Um, and the last one of the last lines said at, at the, um, at the event was lead with our hearts and we can change the world. So I am so, so proud to be with you guys was so such an honor to be at the event, but most importantly, we couldn't wait to get back and share with you so that as a group, we can make a bigger impact. So thanks for being on tonight. Um, thank you, Shauna, for leading this call and for Monica, Diane, Corey, Heather, you guys all were fabulous. So um, thanks you guys. And um, you can hop on the, uh, the national call at eight and at 845, Dan Bell welcomes us to his call as well. And those calls are in the top three post in coaching is up for change. I also put a post in there about compliance, you guys. Hate to kind of end it with a wah wah, but it is so important. Um, there have been a lot of posts we've been putting out about, um, hey, lose eight to 10 pounds by Thanksgiving. Um, that is not acceptable or compliant, and it is important that we follow that. So just check the post in the, in the notifications, the, uh, the featured post, just so that we can all be on the same page and we can share this gift um, as, as um, in the best way possible. So I'll see you on the Facebook, in the Facebook group and see you next time. Bye.